In this recording, we are going to practice some basic Excel skills. This is a scenario in which a professor is keeping track of student grades in a gradebook in Excel. There are nine students in this class, and for the sake of simplicity, we refer to these students as student one, student two, student three. So I'm going to enter student names here. In cell A2, I have student 1. And remember from previous presentations that I don't have to type in the other eight students' names. Rather, I grab the dot at the bottom right of the cell, drag it till I have nine students. And then now suppose that these students have taken two tests test 1 and test 2. So, test 1, test 2. And here are the student grades for the two tests. What the instructor wants to do is to calculate raw grade averages. Note that this column label is too long and is overflowing the column width. So all I need to do is to uh, grab the border between columns D and E and grab it to the right. Or even easier, I can simply double click on it. And Excel automatically widens it as much as needed. Now let's calculate grade averages for each student. So all formulas begin with an equal sign. So equal sign parentheses. I click on the first uh, uh, grade plus the second grade divided by the number of tests offered, which is two. And now I can hit the enter button. Note that Excel gives you some calculated easy tips as well. If I select 80 and 90, and then look down here, I can see that it already gives me average of 85 count is 2, meaning that the student has taken two tests. And they are both numbers. The minimum is 80 and the maximum is 90. And the sum is 170, which in this case is not that useful. Now to calculate raw averages for the remaining students, you can of course manually enter the same formula for the remaining ones. divided by 2. But of course the easier way is to use the autofill feature by Excel. So I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to go to the first formula that I created and I'm grabbing the bottom right uh, dot, dragging it to the very last row. And you can see that the test averages have been calculated for all nine students. Now suppose the instructor wants to know how easy or difficult each of these two tests have been. So I'm going to calculate a test average. So we are going to add test average. To calculate test average, again, we use an equal sign followed by parentheses. You can click on the first student's test grade plus the second one plus the third one all the way to the last one divided by the number of students in this class which is nine. So you get the test average of 72.77 for test one. And you can again verify that number by selecting the range and then double checking by this number that's produced down here. To calculate the test average for test two, all you need to do is to copy the formula over to cell C11. And that's easily doable by grabbing the bottom right dot and uh, dragging it to the right. So 73. Uh, now, if you select this range, 
you'll notice that the average created by Excel is actually 83 and not 73. So there is a discrepancy here. As it turns out, the formula that you have composed here actually treats this cell as a zero, even though it's a blank. So the student has not taken the test. So this average that you see here is not a good description of easiness or difficulty of the test. You can, of course, uh, divide this by eight and get the same number as, well, here. But then what if you have hundreds of students? It's not easy to know how many have taken it and how many have not. Therefore, we use an alternative method. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to use a function that Excel provides for calculating averages. So again, it starts with an equal sign like any other formula. The function is average and then I specify the range and I can close the parenthesis and hit enter and I get 72. I can copy this formula to the cell next to it the same way we've done it before and you see 83.1 which is uh, consistent with actually what you see here this instructor is also interested in knowing uh, the lowest and the highest grade on each test so maximum grade now Excel has another function for this purpose and like any other formula this one also has an equal sign so equal max of the same range so the maximum on this test is 100 and I can easily copy it to the next cell the maximum grade on the second test is also 100 and now I'm going to have the minimum so minimum equals there's another function called min in Excel and then I specify the range as the argument 40 is the lowest grade on test 1 and I copy it over and 65 is the lowest grade on test 2. The professor also wants to know how many students have taken each test. So number of people who took the test. Again, to make the column wide enough to show everything, I'm double clicking on the border. Excel has a function called count. So count of the range. So nine students took test one. And I'm copying it over to column C. And eight students have taken test two. Remember that student 5 has uh, missed the test. The passing grade in this class is 60. So the instructor also wants to know how many students have earned the minimum passing grade. So number of students passed. For this purpose, we are going to use a function called COUNTIF. So you first specify the range, which is students' grades on the test. Remember that the passing criteria in this case is earning a grade larger than or equal to 60. And you hit enter, and it shows you the number 6. You can manually verify that. Well, we have 1 to three people below 60 so that is right you can easily copy over this formula to the uh, cell next to it and this tells you that eight students have earned the passing uh, grade of 60 on test 2 